السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا أرحم الراحمين I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what benefit us benefit us from what he taught us and increase us in knowledge Ameen Rabbil Alameen the brothers in the back please طيب I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this gathering I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us barakah in everything that we do I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless me with the sincerity in everything that I say and I do inshallah and everybody that is hearing today inshallah Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen Today is uh, today's hero is a uh, Probably the most famous khatib the Arab world have ever heard. And there's no Arabi in anywhere in the world except I've heard of, of this sheikh. And the sheikh is khatib. Mean? <laughs> sheikh Abdul Hamid Kishk. You see, even the Algerian know, <laughs> know the Sheikh. And the Sheikh is originally from Egypt. <laughs> this is a Sheikh that, subhanAllah, in the, well, the 70s probably? Yeah, 70s. He was called Faris Al-Manabir. Faris, knight with a K. Knight of the Manabir. Yani he rejuvenated the art of giving khutbas. Our shiuch, my shiuch personally, are his students. Subhanallah. And most of the shiuch that are now in their 50s, 60s, he was their, he was their teacher. He was the one that they look up to. Sheikh Abdul Hamid was born in Egypt in a very small village in the, in the year 1933. And that village was next to al Iskandaria. He, he was born to a very, very poor family. His father passed away when he was very young, starting his school years. At the age of six, you know, very poor family, at the age of six, he started feeling something wrong with his left eye. He was narrating his story. He said, my mother took us to Halla <laughs> il Manta'a. The, the mother took him to the barber of the, <laughs> of the neighborhood, the barber, to check his eye. <laughs> so long story short, he lost his eye. <laughs> he said, I lost my, my left eye at the age of six. And one of the very specialty of the Sheikh that made him very attractive to all, a lot of people, yani, was his sense of humor. He was very, very funny, and he got the message in a very beautiful, humorous way. Very nice. So he said, at the age of 17, my right eye got jealous from my left eye, and I lost my sight. <laughs> SubhanAllah. So he was completely blind at the age of 17. At the age of 12 was his first khutbah. He was sitting in the masjid and the khatib did not show up. So the mu'adhin of the masjid asked him, because he was very, since he was a young kid, he was very bright. And he finished memorizing the Quran at age of eight. So the mu'adhin asked him to get up and give a khutbah. And he was very impressive. He impressed everybody. MashaAllah, with, with his khutbah. He went to Al-Azhar to study Sharia, and he graduated with distinction. He got a score of 100 over 100 in Usul al-Din. So he was the top of, of his class. Then he started giving the khutbahs in the year 1964 
And they assigned him, the government assigned him a masjid called Ain al Hayat, Ain al Hayat, which after his death it was named Masjid Sheikh Kishik. It was named after him. Most of his uh, talks and uh, khutab are against the government. <laughs> so, due to that, he was jailed many, many times. He was jailed on the days of Abdul Nasir. He was jailed on the days of Sadat. He was jailed a lot, in and out of jail. When the Sheikh was released in 1968, he did not come down from the, out of jail and he bowed to the, to the regime. No, he continued and he became more critical and more energetic. Though he was arrested and released many, many times after this. When they signed the Camp David Treaty, he flipped. And that was the time when his, it was his peak of attacking the authorities. He had around 2,000, you know, remember the cassette tapes? Yeah. He had around 2,000 tapes, 2,000 different lectures that circulated all over the Arab world. Every time you leave uh, a khutbah in anywhere in the world, you see someone selling or giving away his lectures. Now, being a person that always preparing for lectures, whether it's khatiras, whether it's khutbahs, whether it's, I was saying to myself, with my eyes and all the technology, it takes me such a long time to be able to get the information through and prepare something that is authentic. This man was blind at 17. <laughs> blind. Subhanallah. How could he, of course it's with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be able to give very strong, powerful, 2,000, all of them are very strong, 2,000 lectures with limited resources that, that he had, rahimahullah. His speeches became so popular that the masjid was extended three times to accommodate the musallim. The people, in order to attend his khutbah, they have to stay from Fajr. Otherwise, there's no way you'll be able to sit inside the masjid. It reaches between 10 to 15,000 people attending his khutbahs. During, during 1981 and 82, he was imprisoned again, but this time when he was released, when he was released, he was informed that we will release you on one condition. No more khitaba. This is how powerful he was. We will release you, either you stay in jail or we could release you, but you stay at home, no more going to your masjid. You could imagine someone like this, how much he was, he was hurt. He was married, he had five boys and three, uh, five sons and three daughters. They all, bifadlillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, memorized the Quran. And who was their teacher? He was himself, himself a blind man. He was the one who taught all eight his children memorize the Quran. His son said, my father, eight of us never ever raised a hand or beat any, any of us. He never left Egypt. The only time he left Egypt was in 1973 when he went to, to Hajj. He used to have a lot of jokes that, you know, I'm going to try to translate them because usually they are in Egyptian, they're very funny. <laughs> if you translate them, you might lose the, uh, the joke in them. So since he was being arrested all the time with the, with the police, all the police know him. So one time, looks like a guy <laughs> did not know who he is. So he arrested him, he said, name, he said, uh, Abdul Hamid uh, Kishik. 
He said, uh, occupation. He looked at him, and you don't know me. He said, co-pilot. <laughs> He's blind. <laughs> he said, co-pilot. <laughs> and then he used to, he had a famous uh, he had a famous statement. He used to say, Allahumma salli ala saf al-thani wa thalith wa rabi Ya Allah makes you know, salat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the second, third, and fourth row. So they told him, what about the first row? He said, the first row is all mukhawarat, <laughs> all secret agents. <laughs> they're watching me and waiting, recording every word I say. <laughs> no salat on them. <laughs> While they're standing there. <laughs> While they're standing there. Subhanallah. So about Hasni Mubarak, he said, Husni Mubarak, la hasan wa la baraka. <laughs> there's no hasan in him, and there's no baraka in him. <laughs> so imagine how much they loved him. <laughs> so he, uh, he used to say also, I had a few things written here. <clears throat> He said, nine parts, tis'a ashar zulm fi Misr. Nine parts of oppression lives in Egyptian prisons. And only one-tenth resides in the rest of the world, but by night it comes and sleep in the Egyptian prisons. <laughs> yani all the zulm in the world is in the Egyptian prisons. <coughs> In the year 1996, he sat down with his wife and he told her, how old was Rasulullah when he died? She told him, 63. He said, this is the year I'm going to die. Even the Mufti of Australia, he called him up and he told him, I'm coming in a few days. He said, I don't know if you'll find me. He woke up one day, it was the morning of a Jummah. He told his wife, I had a dream. He said, what was the dream? She said, I dreamt that I died, uh, I met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Umar was next to him. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told me, say salam to Umar. So I shook his hand, and all of a sudden, I dropped dead. So Rasulullah sallallahu washed my body. And then I woke up. So the wife told him, I thought you taught us that if you see a bad dream, not to say it. He said, you consider this is a bad dream? I hope that this dream will come true. I can't wait. That was the day he went and he made ghusl and Jum'ah. He came out from Jum'ah while his kids already uh, went to the masjid. He went and he prayed two rak'ah at home. In the second rak'ah, in his sujood, he passed away. And he was very well known that he used to make in the member dua, Ya Allah, take my soul, ana sajid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his dua. Now what inspired me to speak about him today is a brother sent me a clip of one of his students, Sheikh Nash'at Ahmed. Sheikh Nash'at Ahmed is still a major scholar in Egypt, still teaching till now. He was one of his students. Sheikh Nash'at was saying that his brother, Sheikh Kishk brother, passed away 13 years after the death of Sheikh Kishk. He said they have in their tradition that you know, they bury the family in the same, uh, same grave. And you dig and you put one on the left, one on the right. Anyway, when they dug the grave, of Sheikh Kishik to put his brother, he said, Wallahi, this is a very, very honorable 15 years. I went down, Sheikh Kishik's body is still the same. Still the same. He said, the kafan, Sheikh. And he's still alive. And if you see him, you could tell from his face, MashaAllah, yani, nahsabahu ala khair. He said, Wallahi, after 30, and the smell of the grave is all musk. He said, Ya Shabab, he said, my brothers, <laughs> I'm swearing by Allah that I went down there myself and I saw this with my own eyes. His body is still the same. 13 years. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. And he said, not one, he did not find one insect in the, 
in the grave. While on the other hand, the other day, a very, very, very rich man, يعني millions and millions of dollars, he passed away. The cemetery already dug the grave. When they got to the grave, they found that the and his family took the body. Grave, there was a flood. Some sewage close to the graveyard was flooded. And the sewage came to the grave. So the bottom of the grave is all sewage. This man used to live in a mansion, two to three million dollars. So when, the, when they came and they looked at each other, they had the parents, the kids, the, I mean, the sons of the deceased, they asked, can you please dig us another one? We'll pay whatever. He said, no, this is it. He said, we had to put my father in the sewage. He was buried next to the sewage from the qusur, from the mansions to the sewage, subhanAllah. So one of the great signs of Hasan uh, al-Khatima, one of the great signs that somebody had a good khatima is when you hear that, you know, his, uh, uh, when they were washing him, there was a smell of musk. When they, uh, when they go to his grave, if it happened, they go into his grave, they see no, you know, no incidents that indicate there's any, uh, subhanAllah, any bad smell or any uh, snakes. Like one guy, one time, uh, one sheikh, uh, he, uh, he washes the bodies. He said, Wallahi, every time we go to the grave, we take this body. We turn it towards the qibla, it turns by itself to the other side. Eh. He puts it towards the qibla, he goes up, you want to throw the, it turns back again. He said five, six times. Then the sheikh called his sheikh. He said, yeah, sheikh, what should I do? I mean, people are waiting, and uh, every time I face it to the qibla, it turns. He said, khalas, leave him. What are you going to do? So after they buried him and everything, he went to his brother. He said, this has never happened to me. I've been 20 years burying people. This never happened to me. What was your brother do? What, what did he do? He said, my brother never faced the qibla while he was alive. You think Allah is going to make him face the qibla when he's dead? He never prayed. Subhanallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the shaykh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all our ulama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our, uh, our shiyukh and our imma. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our hearts. May Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our love to one another. May Allah protect us, protect our women, protect our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in iman. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallah fikum. I will see you in Jum'ah insha'Allah tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Is your share for today? Salam. <laughs> yeah, you say. Don't worry, they're gonna go anyway. Salam, hutla. Salam, hutla. Sister, salam alaikum. Here you go. Yeah, you want one? Give halak habib. Salam, hutla. Salam alaikum. Is a kiri habib. No, but you can. I know, but do. Tell you okay. Bilal, is your candy? I came for candy. Here's one, last one. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. You can take this. Salaam, how are you? Alhamdulillah.